What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So in today's video guys, we are going to be talking about Man United's last game that we went and played PSG in the UEFA Champions League guys in match day 5. Anyway guys, let's just get in straight to today's video. So we made one change from the last game against Istanbul, Basic Shea. Talking about the starting 11, so we started with De Gea, Wan-Bissaka, Lindelof, Maguire, Tellez, McTominay, Fred, Rashford, Fernandez, Marshall and Cavani. Getting into the overall reaction now, absolutely crap, not good enough. It's disappointing and frustrating. We missed too many chances and we didn't take them. The group is wide open once again. We have to beat RB Leipzig next week. Performance wasn't good enough. The defending was a shambles. We were not clinical enough. Once Fred got sent off, the game was open. Why does Oli wait 15 minutes to go to bring on substitutions? Oli got the wrong team selection and the wrong formation. Onwards and upwards, we move on. Anyway, guys, let's just get straight into today's video. What did I make of the performance? Well, if you look at that performance as a whole, it was not good enough last night. And the reason why I'm still a bit frustrated and annoyed with that performance last night is because of that defending from last night. Those three goals were comical, absolutely comical to concede. The reason why I said Oli got the wrong team selection and the wrong formation, he got that wrong formation. We should have gone three at the back last night, never mind going attacking with four at the back. When you've got Lindelof and Maguire, you think it's not good enough. We're not that rock solid, we are not playing as a unit. We need another centre back for more support with playing those two clowns. So you have to play someone like Eric Bailey, who was available, who was fit for that game as well. If you're fit for the game, you should be playing that game, never mind sitting on the bench. The reason why I'm still a bit annoyed and frustrated was that defending last night. That defending was absolutely comical. They literally carved us open. It was that shocking. They carved us open. We're not good enough defensively. If you look at that performance as a whole, it wasn't good enough. It was just disappointing and frustrating that we had so many chances out on goal and we simply didn't take them we were the better team last night and i was thinking to myself i saw that 11 that psg put out and i thought i'm sure we are playing one of the worst psg sides going i don't care if i've got psg fans on here saying oh yeah we've got a good team we've got neymar and mbappe cavani left he's playing for manchester united tiago silva left he's gone to chelsea you bloody selling players you've sold your best players so this is the thing they've sold the best players but yet they're beating us at the end of the day, PSG are, are a crap side, but they still managed to beat us. They didn't even have to play Ander Herrera. They didn't even have to play Di Maria, and we still lost. Not good enough from this team. Sick and tired of it. I'm not going to say Oli out, because I don't think it was Oli's fault. I think that was clearly down to the players to go and produce and get something out of that game. Performance was rubbish last night. It's disappointing and frustrating. The group's wide open once again, and we've done this not once now, but twice now. Man United, PSG and RB Leipzig are all sat on nine points now. This group is anybody's. I'll tell you, it's fucking anybody's. And one of these big teams are going into that Emmerdale Cup next week. So we need to wake up and smell the coffee and get our, our act together for next week. Because that wasn't good enough. And the defence was a shambles. We were not clinical enough. Once Fred got sent off, the game was open to PSG. They were going to run away and, and win that game. We were definitely not going to score with 10 men down. They took the advantage and they scored a third goal. Now you've got Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that waits 15 minutes to bring on the substitutions. Not good enough. Onwards and upwards we move on now. Talking about the game now, I thought the first half kicked off. I thought PSG were the better side. United were just still in the dressing room. We didn't know what to do. We were all over the place. It was a bit of a dodgy, edgy uh, first 15, 20 minutes of the game. Um, and then I thought PSG were the better side. They they were playing quick, incisive football, high intensity, high tempo. Uh, the put us under pressure, and then boom, straight away they got a goal in the first opening six, seven minutes of the game. Not the start we wanted. And then I thought um, after that twenty minute spell where we sort of, you know, we sort of came, and then it was like after the twenty minutes, it was like we came out of the dressing room and we thought, right, this is the business now. But what it was is once we got hold of possession we knew that we were going to be able to have chances. And if we took our chances, we would have scored on our chances. And we didn't. And there you go once again. We had chances about a month ago, a month, half an ago, whenever we played PSG last. We had chances and we took them. And um, there you go. Well, uh, it just goes to show. And then um, I thought um, United then, once we sort of got hold of possession a little bit, 
we managed to play with high intensity, high tempo. We took control. I thought we do. We I think when we had the possession, we dominated them as well. I thought in the first half we were a, a lot more better after the first twenty minutes as well. And then I thought um, once we kept pushing, putting on the uh, once we once we kept put, putting them under pressure, got in between the lines, we play with intent, play with energy. And then I thought once we put them under pressure, we could see a goal was coming. And then Rashford went and scored a goal, deflected goal, but. It was nice to get the equaliser, and you're thinking one-one, perfect. Let's not let's not bottle this now. And then you're thinking we're in a good position, and we in we're back in the game. This is anybody's game. Then um, second half, you're thinking right. The first 15 minutes, if nothing doesn't go to plan, I'm going to make changes now. Even now, let, talking about changes, Fred got near. Should have got nearly. Fred should have got sent off in that first half. He was a lucky boy to stay on that pitch in that first half. He could have gone in that first half. But in the second half, now this is where it comes into mind. And here's your game management and your decision making as well as a manager. You're saying to Fred in, in that half-time team talk, be sensible. You know, stay on your two feet. Don't do anything stupid. He, he, he had that trust in Fred to go and do that. And... Yes, he got the ball, but the referee looks at the the follow through, and that's the worst point of it. The follow through, and he got another second yellow, and he's off. Now the thing is, Oli knew that he had five substitutions last night. He could have taken off Fred, and that was one, and that was one sub, because you don't want to risk him. You don't want to risk him of getting another yellow, and then that's it. You know, he's out for the next game, and he's already out for the next game anyway. And um, what what a, I mean. That's another thing. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, take off Fred. I would have taken off Fred in that first half. Bring on, and then you've got Donny van der Beek, Matic and Pogba sat on the bench. One of them could have come on for Fred. Probably Pogba. And then most likely you would take off uh, McTominay for, for Matic, if you had to. But, yeah, he had five substitutions last night and um, didn't take off Fred. And then I thought in the second half, uh, I thought we were much better. I thought we got on the front foot, we created chances, chances that we didn't take. Um, Marshall had a fucking great chance. That should have been 2-1. Gavoni should have made it 3-1. Or even Marshall should have, you know, put it, uh, put in the, uh, the rebound or the second chance or whatever you want to call it. But again, missed chances, we didn't take them. And... You know, PSG take their chances and they paid the price. They took their chances. We didn't. Fine margins, once again. Not good enough. And um, the defence was a shambles. Not good enough. This defence is fucking getting on my tits now as well. And I've said this time and time again. We are not going to win any trophies with that centre-back partnership. We are never going to win a Premier League with that centre-back partnership. We need to sort this defence out. They carved us open like a fucking... Oh, my God. We were awful. I would have done better and um, not got enough. That, uh, and then once, obviously, once Fred got sent off, that was it. The game changed. Um, PSG had their, already had their substitutions made. They made an impact coming off the bench. And they scored a third goal to finish it off within the last five minutes to go so it was awful and uh, not our night but pfft, Jesus Christ it's all down to the it's all down to next week now against RB Leipzig another tough game Jesus Christ not the result we wanted last night after losing 3-1 to PSG my United PSG and RB Leipzig are all on nine points it's all eyes on next week now yeah it is all the eyes are on next week now PSG have got Istanbul I think at home PSG know that if they win that game, they're through. I think for us, even a point's enough for us to go through it. We shouldn't be thinking about the point next week. We've got to win. It's a must-win against RB Leipzig next week. All eyes on next week. We're all on nine points. And once again, the group's wide open again. And United have not done this once, but twice now. Tell you what, it's close, eh? One of these big teams are going to be going into the Europa League next week. And I definitely do not want United to go into that Europa League. And we need to win against RB Leipzig. We need to finish the group on a high. 
and we need to finish this group at the top of the table as well. They all said it was a group of death. That's two losses now that we've suffered in this group. And even if, if we hadn't lost to Istanbul or Basic Shir, it could have been game over, but it's not. We're in this position now where we have to go away to RB Leipzig next week. We've got to go to Germany and win. It's either a win or a draw. RB Leipzig have got nothing to lose next week and they've got to win. We can't afford that to happen. We've got to go there and win that game and we've got to go attacking. And that's down to what happens on the weekend now against West Ham. We've first got to look forward to the game against West Ham first. Get the confidence back. Away we go again in the week against RB Leipzig. All the eyes are on next week now. We've left it down to their last game. That's typical Manchester United for you, leaving it down to the last game. This group could have been dead and buried a couple of weeks ago, and we've left it down to the last week. But I think if we win, I think all the United fans will be relieved that we're through to the next round. That's where now we've got to really put in a fucking performance in, a fucking good performance in against RB Leipzig. One of these big teams are going into the Europa League next week. All eyes are on next week now. Must win, can't lose. We've got to get back to winning ways next week against RB Leipzig. It's going to be tough, it's going to be difficult, but we're going away from home. Must win next week and we can't lose it at the end of the day. Did the referee get the right decision to send Fred off? This is the thing. Fred actually got the ball and even if you look back on the replay, Fred gets the ball first. But what the referee is looking at, he's looking at the different angles. He knows that his assistant was literally a couple of yards off seeing that and the ref was a couple of yards off. Maguire was only a couple of yards away as well. But the referee looks at it at the worst angle. He looks at that follow through, what Fred does, and he's gone, yeah, that's a yellow card, he's off. Now, this is where you go to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He should have been off at half time. He should have been off at half time and that's it. Your night is over at half time. If you've got a yellow card, you're off because I don't want to risk you. But Ollie took a risk last night and it paid the price and where you go again. He got sent off, misses the next game. At the end of the day, you can't complain about it. You can't review a yellow card, but I think the referee got the right call in the end by sending off Fred. At the end of the day, Fred got the ball first and then the follow through. I think you've got to look at the different angles first. Once a yellow card's been given, and you get the second yellow card, you can't really review a yellow card. So discipline issues for Fred. Once I saw that first yellow card, I thought, he's going to get a sending off. He did. That's all his fault for not taking off Fred. Misses the next game against RB Leipzig, so that rules him out for next week against RB Leipzig. Most likely see, hopefully, two different midfielders as well. Why does Oli wait 15 minutes to go to bring on substitutions? Now, this is the thing. Even if we might have been still drawing that game 1-1, you would be thinking at the 60th minute, I want to bring on some substitutions. I've also got to think about the game on the weekend against West Ham. And you've got to think about, right, I'm going to pull off this player and I'm going to throw on somebody else. And we need to get attacking. We need to win this game. And Oli waits for the 15 minutes to go because he thinks that with that team that we had out last night, he thought, I'm going to trusting those players to go out and hopefully get the win. But you cannot just stick to those players. Like again, you've got to think about the game on the weekend. It was like what we did last week against Istanbul, Basak Shir. That game was dead and buried in the first half. We took our chances. We were 3-0 up in the first half. We took off Bruno, Fred, Rashford and all them lot last week. They all came off. He should have done the same thing in the 60th minute. But the reason why he waited 15 minutes to go was because he wanted to see how long they could last until we conceded a goal and that's ollie for you again he waits until we concede a goal and he goes oh shit we're two on down there you go and then you're not going to get back into the game when you're 10 men down as well ollie does that all the time he waits 15 minutes to go to bring on substitutions he thinks it's enough time to bring on the substitutions to make an impact in the game it's not enough time you need at least half an hour to sort of get yourself back into the game we didn't get ourselves back into the game once fred got sent off well even if the second goal went in it was game over anyway who was the worst player on the pitch well, it's tough because there was a couple of players that had didn't have a good game last night i think Maguire and lindelof were crap last night both of them were crap i thought wan Basaka did well on the right hand side managed to do well keep it quiet for neymar as well Tellez was going up against mbappe the two centre backs had a crap game mctominay wasn't great as well i think De Gea can't control that defense and i think if you bring on henderson he can really control that defense and De Gea can't do that rashford scored the goal fernandez had a quiet night last night martial should have scored cavani should have scored the worst player you have to give it to is those two clown centre backs Lindelof and Maguire they had a poor game last night definitely I would have given them a low rating last night because they were both crap 
Yeah. RB RB Leipzig in our last group stage game. Coming up into this game against RB Leipzig, we know it's going to be tough, it's going to be difficult. We know this is a must win, and obviously, even a point's enough to go through, but I think we've got to be looking at the win. Ollie knows that we need to go attacking and we need to go with four at the back. Obviously, he'll be making changes for this one, and he's not always going to be sticking with the likes of Maguire and Lindelof. So, hopefully, he's going to think about making changes for this one against RB Leipzig, but still, he wants something out of this game against RB Leipzig. We know it's going to be tough. We know it's going to be difficult. RB Leipzig is probably a tough place to go to, even to go to Germany as well. RB Leipzig, they're a great team, fantastic team. They've got lots of quality there. Obviously, they're playing Bayern Munich on the weekend, first versus second. Leipzig sort of get a win there. They'll be up on a high if they lose that. They'll be low on confidence and they'll want to put it right in the week against us and obviously they'll know that they'll be they'll be at home for our game so they'll want to put it right if they lose to Bayern Munich but Leipzig they only just edged it last night against Istanbul Basak Shir they won 4-3 seven goals in that game last night RB Leipzig once again I said this last time in my last video I think once after Leipzig lost to us 5-0 that embarrassing loss they sort of went up and down their fixtures were they were not consistent they were literally drawing a game losing the game then back on a high again so they've not been really consistent since after that embarrassing loss that 5-0 loss but they're sort of getting themselves back on track now the second in the league it's going to be tough it's going to be difficult this and for us to go away from home to RB Leipzig and to get a result we need to be defensively a unit we have to be a unit at the back and um, I'd be sort of I'd be worried whatever I'd be worried with that defence because I'll tell you what, the reason why the opposition plays the uh, hard and light pass is because so that they can get in between Harry Maguire and Lindelof because they know that they're slow on pace and they don't have pace and they're not quick as well. So, But if you look back at our last fixture against RB Leipzig, their formation was the 3-1-4-2. So... You know, like again, they like to exploit with their different formations as well. And obviously, you know, we know it's going to be a tough one against RB Leipzig. And we know we have to be not only just be mentally ready for this one, but physically as well. It's going to be a good fight, good test, difficult going away from home. And um, But we need to go away from home and put in a real good performance in. And, you know, obviously this is going to decide who's going through to the round of 16 and we can't afford to lose this game if we lose this game it's over we're in the Europa League and um, but even if we might even get lucky on goal difference as well so I think PSG know that they're going home next week to Istanbul Basic year and if they're capable of getting a win there then PSG are through and then it's obviously all eyes on what happens against United and Leipzig so I think going away to Leipzig, it's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. They've got a lot of quality players in there. Upperman Connor is going to be missing this game, which is a boost. Um, so, but I mean, once again, United need a quick start, quick and bright start to the game. And this is the thing: we keep having these slow starts to these games, and we're not having the quick and bright start to the game. And then we sort of find ourselves behind in the game, and then we get a goal back into the game. But this is why. This is where now, in this Leipzig game, we have to have a quick and bright start to this game. We have to be attacking from the get-go. High intensity, high tempo. We need to play intent, play with energy. We need to get in between the lines. We need to go and exploit their weaknesses. And we did that last time and we absolutely battered them 5-0. And we need to sort of do something the same. I expect Donny van der Beek to play this one because we need to get attacking. And we need to be playing that one-touch football again, like what we did last week. So, one-touch football. We need to play with fluidity, uh, and we need to play with fluidity as well. We need to be. We need. We need to make sure that we have to keep it tight at the back, be compact as a team. We need to show the resilience in the team, and we need to be. Uh, we need to keep it tight, and you know. Don't concede stupid goals, and we keep doing that. We keep conceding stupid goals time and time again, and um, we need to keep it tight at the back. We need to be a unit at the back, and we cannot concede goals. And if we and if we get that first goal against Leipzig, they'll be shocked. They'll be shitting themselves because then they've got they've got to get themselves back in the game. So if we can get the first goal on Leipzig, and it's always crucial to get the first goal as well. And if we can get that first goal, they'll be shitting themselves. And then if they get the and if we get the second goal, they'll be 
they'll be fucking, they'll be turning to each other thinking, what the fuck's going on? So we need to put in a real good performance against Leipzig and we know it's going to be difficult, tough place to go. You know, obviously they beat Istanbul 2-0, uh, they beat PSG 2-1 as well. So, and then, I mean, if you look at their home rec- uh, the, their away record, it's not good. Away from, away from home to us, lost 5-0. Away from home to PSG, lost 1-0. And then they only just got away with it against Istanbul. So it's all about we have to put in a, 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 a fantastic performance in against uh, RB Leipzig. And, um, you know, we have to be on it from the get-go, from minute one to minute 90. And we've got to be on top of it from minute one to minute 90. We've got to keep it compact. Uh, we need to keep it tight at the back. And don't make any mistakes. And uh, we need to make sure we win our 50-50 duels, win every six win every single second ball and we need to fight um, from minute one to minute 90 fight passion pride uh, and we need everything out of that game and um, we've got to give it absolutely everything we need to give it absolutely 110% to keep ourselves into the Champions League and this game is going to determine who's going through and we need to be on top of it and um, we've got to stay on top of it and if we can put in a, and if we can win this game we will be through so we just got to take it one game at a time first but we need to beat RB Leipzig next week it's going to be tough it's going to be difficult and um, looking forward to another good game need to be physically mentally ready and um, you know whatever what up, we're up against a real good team in RB Leipzig and yeah we'll have to see how what the outcome is and we need to win got some must win and um Message to Manchester United, just win the fucking game. Getting to the goal now, first goal, Fred passed the ball to Bruno, Bruno passed the ball to Martial, Martial cuts back inside, gets the shot off, the keeper saves it, wan gets the possession back, Pass the ball to Rashford, Rashford shoots, gets a deflection and scores for 1-1. Getting into the stats now, possession for Man United, it was 44.3% and for PSG it was 55.7%. Goals for Man United it was 1 and for PSG it was 3. Total shots for Man United it was 12 and for PSG it was 13. Shots on target for Man United it was 5 and for PSG it was 6. Shot accuracy for Man United it was 41.7% and for PSG it was 46.2%. Shots inside the box for Man United it was 6 and for PSG it was 10. Shots outside the box for Man United it was 6 and for PSG it was 3. Total passes for Man United, it was 415 passes, 522 passes for PSG. Pass accuracy for Man United, it was 82.7% and for PSG, it was 88.2%. Getting into the substitutions now, Rashford went off a of Pogba, talking about Rashford's performance. His equaliser was via a deflection, but that is now three goals in four games against PSG. Petri fired PSG, but four stuff hurt in the second half. Cavani went off of Van der Beek, talk about Cavani's performance, more involved in the second half and linked up superbly with Rashford for Martial's chance. So unlucky with his chip that hit the bar. Martial went off a of Greenwood, talk about Anthony's performance. Two dilatory with his decision making and squandered great chances at 1-1. Showed why he has been moved from the striker role. When Basaka went off for Igalo, talk about Aaron's performance, good awareness to find Marcus Rashford for the equaliser on a rare foray into the final third. Next up, we've got RB Leipzig. RB Leipzig are third in the table. Yep, this game's going to determine who's going through to the round of 16. Looking forward to the, this game against Leipzig. And we need everything out of the final third. We need to perform for a full 90 minutes. And we've got to try and maintain, we've got to try and maintain that high intensity, that high tempo. We need to get in between the lines, try and expose their defence once again. Upperman Carno's out for this game and so is Fred, obviously. We need the fluidity in the team, we need one touch football. It's going to be a tough place to go to RB Leipzig and especially to go to Germany and do the job as well. And that's why it needs to be a special performance to knock out Leipzig. We could bottle this honestly we could this is a must win game against Leipzig we can't afford to lose another game if we lose this game we're in the Europa League ourselves we need to perform for a full 90 minutes and we need to try and maintain it for the full 90 Oli needs to pick the right team he needs to put the players in the right positions he needs to balance the team out right the structure in the team needs to be right we need depth in the team and he needs to select the right formation for the game we need to be attacking we need the fluidity we need to be physically I'm mentally ready on the day. Looking forward to another fantastic game against RB Leipzig. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. But looking forward to this tough game against Leipzig. Must win game. We have to win it. We need to win it. However we do it, we have to win this game. So far, Leipzig is scoring 1.6 goals per game. 
And so far, RB Leipzig have conceded 2.0 goals per game. They have won three, drawn none and lost two. They've lost to Man United 5-0 and they've lost to PSG 1-0. Since after RB Leipzig lost to Man United 5-0, they've won two, drew one and lost one. So a bit of inconsistency as well. RB Leipzig are second in the Bundesliga. The players to look out for is Angelino, Conant, Zapista, Unkoku, Almo, Campbell, Harida, Paulson, Forsberg, Wanky Chan, Serloff and Cliver. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to my channel if you are new. See you guys in the video in the next couple of days. And peace.